Hi, this is a Tillamook Cheddar with Lucangium Carthusianum, the Oregon black truffle. What? Oh, me? Ready? Mm-mm-mm. Oh! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here, no, you have to have this. You have to have this. <laughs> oh my god, so good. Over climate. Holy moly. Ooh. You just bent your knife. I'm good with shit. <laughs> Oregonians are known for putting an intense passion into their crafts. Not only do they do things differently and uniquely here, but most importantly, they do it themselves. I'm joining today with fellow Oregonians as we roll up our sleeves to fill our bellies. It's really fucking cold out this morning. We've been driving around the beautiful state of Oregon and I've noticed that there are tons of Christmas tree farms here. Here I am in a really spectacular one where I'm gonna pick out my very own tree to barter for my breakfast. We're gonna go to Off the Waffle where they accept bartered goods for waffles, which is so Oregon. This one's pretty nice. That's a cute one. I like it. I pick my Christmas trees like I pick my men. A little funky, a little fucked up. Oh! I hope those waffle people appreciate what I do for them. Timber! It's like shaking the boogers out of my head. Let's go bring this freaking tree to its final destination. I have an idea. Okay, perfect. This tree is gonna get me a lot of waffles. It smells so good. I'm making a quick trip to the city of Eugene. It's the second largest in Oregon after Portland. It's a liberal community known for its original hippie population that encourages bartering over cash. It's the perfect fit for a place like Off the Waffle where I can meet the co-owner and trade my Christmas tree for some waffle goodness. That's our waffle. A Liege waffle is one of the most delicious things that I or anyone I know has ever or will ever have in the entire lives. I eat one just about every single day. Tell me, what is a Liege waffle? Brioche-like dough, rich in butter, rich in eggs. We put the specialized sugar in there. It's these little uh, chunks of pearl sugar. So as it's rising, those little sugar nibs kind of like semi-melt out. Okay. And create these little pockets of sugary goodness in the dough. Once it's fully risen, we bake it in our cast iron waffle bakers. That dough looks amazing. Thank you, you look amazing too. Um, okay. We bake them in, these, in this iron for three minutes, and there you go, so now we wait. I don't know why, but I have a hunch about you. You seem like you're gonna be a really good waffle maker. In fact, uh, once you're done with this gig, if you wanna apply for a job with us, I would definitely consider your application okay. uh, <laughs> pretty seriously. Oh, sweet. Open up that iron, you just stick it right through, and then you can pick it on up, Ooh. and you can just God, she's a natural, guys. This is amazing. Smell each one. Quality control. Yep. I would like to work here. This might be my calling. Finally, I found it. I heard that you guys barter. Often we will barter if what you have to bring is a value to us. Eugene is a very barter-friendly community. And as uh, budding entrepreneurs, we didn't have a whole ton of cash to put down on our initial business. So we wanted to find ways to and get people in the door and at the same time be able to create transactions without that money that we had. So bartering was always perfect for us. Each waffle is kind of its own character that brings in its own crowd. Could you base a waffle on me? We could today. All right. Let's do it. And uh, now we can decide on what you'd like mm. to prepare. So. Well, the first thing I see that I love is that brie cheese back there. I would recommend melting that on top of something. Okay. Um, usually brie goes really well with uh, sweet fruits, so maybe like apple or pear. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of what I would go with. Yeah, some brie, some apples. Let's okay. put bacon on it for sure. We'll need to put it in the oven just to get it all crispy. Wow, you're, you're pretty good at this, I gotta say. I know, I learned yeah, the Yeah, you best. forgot to core your apple. Oops. That's the only mistake that you made, but. How about that? That's right. totally fine. <laughs> done and done. The bite marks make it really attractive, I think. Thank you. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a goat in headlights while we're waiting for that bacon. Okay. The goat in headlights is 
probably one of our most popular waffles. I'll start by putting a couple eggs on the griddle. Yeah, we're goat cheesing it up. Otherwise known as chevre, if you want to sound really fancy about it. Chevre. Chevre, you said it right. Chevre? Yeah. We're speaking the same language, the language of waffle. Christy? I would say your bacon is ready, yeah. And then just put the brie right on top of that, and then just stick it back in the oven for about a minute just for that brie to melt. Check it out, guys. Oh my god, that is cooked to perfection. That's, that's amazing. Piece of cake. Piece of waffle. All right, does that look good? Well, what are we gonna call this? This Gabby... is the, the Gabinator? Gabinator. It's a horrible name. So in order to finish up our goat in headlights, what we need is a little bit of olive oil on there. That's perfect. Okay. The only thing we have left to do is get some basil on there. Basil? I never thought basil would go with this, but I trust you. You gotta trust me. Oh, that's gorgeous. So that is a goat in headlights. And these and are the, the headlights goat the goat cheese is under. And this is Got the grass it. the goat eats. Oh my god, I never thought of that. I We need you on the crew, I'm telling you. I think we probably should make a sweet waffle. That's gonna be Walter the Incredible. We can go ahead and whipped cream this guy up. Do you make your own whipped cream? Yep. Can I try it? I wanna yeah, make sure it's safe. Yeah, totally. You gotta go like this. Mmm. All right. <laughs> That's really good. You want to try? Um, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is Walter the Incredible. Oh my God. Is that how it's done in Belgium? Yeah, in Belgium, they definitely do not put a whole bunch of stuff on top of their waffles. In Belgium, they stick to the purest like waffle. That's about that's it. it. But we're in Oregon, we're so in Oregon. we can do whatever. <laughs> yeah, we can. The original. Look how fluffy it is on the inside. I'm so excited. Notice the crisp to fluff ratio. That's what perfect. I'm saying. If you get that ratio just right, then what you get is a pretty heavenly experience. Do you ever get sick of waffles? Stuff. No. I mean, waffles are all about making your dreams come true right in front of your eyes. I think you should really um go for the one I made. Bite, bite into this because this is your creation. This came from from the depths of your heart. And now you can uh, take that back to the depths of your stomach. I like how you just picked it up and just, yeah, no I shame. I how you eat this. That's how you eat it, oh. and that's, that's perfect. And you're mm. perfect just the way you are. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> just like that. Um, that's what waffles are all about. That's so good. I love brie cheese, I can love I take it. A, can I take a bite? Mmm. Mm. What do you think about that? I'm gonna have to run that as a special okay. for a few days. I would be honored. So here we have the goat in headlights. Okay. Best thing about our eggs is the oozing yolk. That yolk just flows in through the avocado and then hits the goat cheese and it's all over the waffle. Yeah, I'm just in waffle bliss. This one is amazing. It doesn't get any better. These waffles are so good. I have to repay you. you somehow. I have a surprise for you. I'm curious. Chill out, I'll be right back. I'm chilling. Oh my goodness, where did you guys <laughs> get that? Is that real? I cut it down myself. This is incredible. I've always wanted a Christmas tree, but my parents would never get me one because they're Jewish. <laughs> So you're telling me that you want to trade this for waffles. Yes. I got to tell you, this is the first time in my entire life that somebody's offered to trade me a Christmas tree. <laughs> Definitely one of the coolest things I've ever bartered for. Oh, stop. Yeah. Let's just call it even, and the next barter we do will be for Fisher Flowers. It's a deal. <laughs> Enjoy the tree. I will. Bye. Bye. And cut. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> Along with bartering, another Oregonian pastime is foraging. So I'm on my way to meet up with a full-time forager who specializes in unearthing an Oregon delicacy, the truffle. Only 30 years ago, truffles were discovered in Oregon. But since then, they've had a hard time living up to their Italian counterparts. Now that they fetch up to $500 a pound, people are starting to recognize the Oregon truffle. I don't know a damn thing about truffle hunting, but I do hear that we have an expert that we're gonna meet, and then he has a dog, so I'm in. Here they are. I'm so excited. <laughs> Hi, dude, sir. Oh, look at you. Who are these people? He's a real truffle dog. 
Because of the increasing value of truffles, foraging grounds are highly contested among truffle hunters. Toby has insisted that we follow him to an undisclosed location. It's deep in the coastal mountains, and there we can start our hunt. Sweet. We've arrived. I'm gonna show you some shit. I am so excited, you have no idea. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, he's a good boy. So this is a super secret spot. I will never tell a soul. Tree farms like this where it's dense, where they've cultivated the trees, they're kind of inadvertently cultivating truffles. We have way more truffles in the Northwest because we cultivate Douglas fir trees. The truffles are here because of the timber production. Yeah, it's a byproduct. They have a direct relationship with the roots. These trees wouldn't really do very well without the truffles. They're under the ground? Yes, we'll find some in just a minute. He will find Sweet. them. Sweet. Want a treat? Where's the oh, truffle? Where is it? Come on, show me, where is it? Come on, show me. I have to watch him for signals, you know? Because mm -hmm. he could find a truffle anywhere in here. What does Appa do when he's about to find a truffle? So right now, you can see he's just kind of walking. He looks very casual, you know? Like I'm watching his tail, I'm watching his body language. And uh, if he catches the aroma of a truffle, you can see his, his body language. He'll stiffen some, he'll turn towards the aroma, and he starts tracking. And when he gets close, I can see him putting his face down, like trying to precisely locate it. What's your life like? My life? Yeah. My lifestyle is kind of based on where the money is with fungi. I don't do anything other than that. When I'm at home and don't have anything to pick, I'm like fiddling with pictures of mushrooms, making psychedelic artwork. It looks oh, like he might have a truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 hey, 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 sit, sit. Good boy, good boy. Oh, there is a truffle there. So look, he just pawed right here, and the truffle's still in the ground, right at the top. Can I just like go like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's pretty big. I mean, that's about an ounce. The truffles that we get are not uniformly in good shape. Some insects have damaged it. So this one's cool. It has some use, but it's not very pretty. I probably won't be able to sell it unless I trim the heck out of it, but. Um, Do you want to go find another one? Yeah, there's plenty here. We just need to go look some more, but it's exciting to find one, you know? Yeah, right? totally. <laughs> I'm excited. I mean, I've truffled a lot, but it's exciting. Yeah, we're gonna find another truffle though. Come on. Hey, 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 wait, 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 come here. Good boy. He was focused here. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, is that one? Yeah. Yeah, that's a white truffle. Oh, that smells, one smells good. You like that shit, yeah. huh? <laughs> it smells like perfumey, but like fruity. Wow, I'm hooked. I wanna be a truffle off, I guess. These are truffles that I harvested elsewhere. I just think that if this was all over the world and people were able to touch it and smell it, we would have to write articles about spontaneous orgasm and shit. My temperature is rising. There are pheromone-like compounds in some truffles. It just makes you like, honey. You know what I'm saying? Can we taste these here or how do we do this? We don't want to eat it just like eating it. They're not food. The magic of truffles is to take the aromatic compounds and infuse other food with them. That's what makes truffles valuable. That's why they're so expensive, because it takes a very little bit to infuse a large amount of stuff. I have a persimmon in my car. Maybe it has some cheese. We gotta do something, though. Let's do it, come okay. on. Oh, this is gonna be good. Oregon brown truffle on a ripe right pear. pear. I'm gonna do it too. Right? Isn't that something? Mm. Subtle. It kind of cuts with the acidity of the pear. I don't know, it's like freaking ethereal. This is this kind of shit, you can't put it into words. You have to try it. I'm gonna pull out a piece of cheese. If you like it, then you should've put a truffle on it. Pear and cheese. Mm. Cheers. Oh yeah. What? What? Oh my God. <laughs> that was really good. That was really, mm. whoa, it's so fragrant. It's truffles, it's not like anything else. He's a good boy. No, <laughs> group hug. <laughs> <laughs> 
Foraging in Oregon is not only good business for harvesters, but also for restaurant owners. I'm heading to Florence. It's a small coastal town on the Suzla Inlet. Here I will meet the owner of Homegrown Public House. She's made a name for herself by foraging her own ingredients and serving them to her customers. We're meeting her at her favorite foraging spot to pick our dinner. Hey, hey how's it going? Good. All right, let's do the mushrooms. All right, sounds good. All right. So let's go get some yellow foots. The cool thing about yellowfoot is they flower in huge clusters that blanket the ground. So here's some yellowfoot right here. Oh, all right. Oh, they look kind of like chanterelles. They're like chanterelles, but they give off more liquid when you cook them. They have a nice flavor. They're good for like pastas and gravies and stuff. Mmm, they smell um, like a little bit like vanilla. Yeah, they're a cool texture. You know what I'm thinking. Do it. <laughs> graze on some, graze on some yellowfoot. <laughs> You're like a baby deer. It doesn't taste that good. <laughs> Let's get some in the bucket. Don't eat them raw. Check this out. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big boy. You work a ton and you're always out in the woods or cooking. Like, why do you do it? I love cooking. I mean, I couldn't sit at a desk and work 40 hours a week. There was really nothing going on in, in Florence for food. There's so much stuff to forage here, and it was kind of sad that the people of the community didn't even know. It kind of opened up the small town's eyes to what's sitting right in front of them. You basically single-handedly started to revive this food scene. The reason why I can have this food and have it on my menu at a reasonable price because I come out and get it myself. I can't wait to see your restaurant. Should we go? I think we're good. I think we have got enough shrooms. I feel like I'm being like reborn here. <laughs> coming out of here. Yeah, I'm coming out of the womb of Mother Nature. Mushrooms then. Yeah, sweet right. kitchen. Thank you. It's big. This is nothing like getting mushrooms from the grocery store. You don't have to pull sticks out of those ones. No. So this is pretty easy. It's just gonna be mushrooms, fennel, shallot, butter. I got some farro and thyme. I'm just gonna do kind of like a simple yellow foot risotto. So there's only a few ingredients in this dish. Is that typical? Well, I'm like definitely a minimalist when it comes to ingredients. Cause I just like to use unprocessed food to full stuff. All the mushrooms on the menu are foraged. All the time? Um, yeah, all the time. Sweet. I don't buy any mushrooms from the store. Cool. So, yeah. 100% mushrooms? 100% of mushrooms foraged. So that's done. And so I like mushrooms and hazelnuts together. That's hazelnut I add. It's like a hazelnut pesto. Mm, so that that's done. delicious. To the bar? Let's do it. Big payoff. The big payoff. The grand debut. Of the time in the woods. Delicious. <laughs> Simple, nutty. To me, it tastes extra good because we... You worked for it. Yeah. Do you like your food better when you forge it yourself? It's really re rewarding. Every dish that we make is special to us because we've literally gone out and, and done it ourselves. This is my first time eating yellowfoot mushrooms. The mushrooms are very mild, but at the same time, they're the star of the show. But I like the way Kelsey does it. Like, she's got a lot of Oregon flavors going on. Being in Oregon makes it so easy to live off the land and to forage and find stuff because it's so diverse. Obviously, a lot of love has gone into this. Yeah. It's super Oregon. Yeah, it's very Oregon. I'm lucky to have explored so much of my new state. I've not only discovered tons about Oregon, but also about myself through these adventures. Here we go! The rush of my first zoo bomb, the taste of bone marrow ice cream, the caress of soft vegan flesh, <laughs> the freezing cold current of the Deschutes River, the mouthfeel of nitrogen tapped cold brew coffee. Oh my God, so good. The unique texture of fresh foraged seaweed, the bouquet of the newly pressed pinot. As the sun sets on my travels, I'm finally beginning to feel like I belong. You gotta get down, you gotta meet, you gotta hug, you gotta communicate. 
The people are tapped into a sense of responsibility to the land and to each other that's reflected in their abundant cuisine. I've been profoundly moved by the people here. Their innovation and passion dedicates them to their craft. The result of their ingenuity is a food scene that is unmatched in its ability to surprise and delight. Oh my god! Oh my god, come here, Krabby! I feel so welcome here. I'm blessed to call Oregon my home. Boys and boys, listen up. The girls are talking now. Um, Kelsey. Feminism. Feminism is good. Sexism. Penises and ginies. <laughs> Sorry, I see them everywhere. All right. We're really wrapping this up yeah. in style. Yeah. In class. In class. <laughs> I put hallucinogenic mushrooms in the risotto. 